<laughs> Who's going to be Poirot? Um, well, you have the moustache, so it makes more sense for you, right? Yeah. Be more stuck in the snow. How? I don't know, get stuck. Be, go. <laughs> Mon dieu, we've been stuck in this snow. I cannot move. And that horrible man who everyone hated has been killed. Oh, he has been murdered. Oh, look at him. <laughs> I have been killed. Oh no, the horrible man who killed you. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're useless. Hello. Welcome to our video. Today we're going to be making a carbonade, which is a type of Flemish stew, um, to pair with the movie Murder on the Orient Express. I think it pairs with whichever version of Murder, Murder in the Orient Express you're wanting to watch, right Jess? Yeah, I mean the main emphasis is that Poirot is of course Belgian, not French. So we're making uh, one of Belgium's national dishes. And we start by cutting up onions, carrots, leeks, you can see a bit of garlic going on in the background there. Mm -hmm. And make the chunks of vegetables fairly large because you want to still be able to have them to munch upon at the end. Yeah, and I don't know whether you noticed back there, but I sort of compared the size of the leeks with the carrots to get them similar sizes. It ended up not really mattering though. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing there, Jess? I'm crushing some giant garlic. I'm getting out thyme and bay leaves, and I'm preparing some seasoning for your beef. Ah, uh, yes. So you dust the beef with flour. This will help make that sort of uh, crusty brown Maillard reaction, um, which makes the beef taste much better and will add loads of richness to the to the stew in the end. And it'll help thicken it as well. Yeah. Right. So you oil, put the beef into the oil, and you're just browning it at this point. You're not trying to cook it. Mm, you want it nice and crusty, basically. Yeah, and you'll see in a second. I don't think that was browned enough, actually. That one is, though. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. So it's on a nice high heat to make sure it gets properly brown. And you don't want to crowd the pan either, which is why you're doing it in batches, right? Yeah, and then I'm just taking it out. And then you add the pancetta. Mm hmm. And again, we want this to get nice and crispy and brown. There, they are nice and crispy. Take them out. Slotted spoon to keep all the nice fat that's rendered out of it, and then add more fat. Add more fat. <laughs> we've got we've got bacon fat. Why not add loads of butter as well? <laughs> and then cook the onions. These cook for how long was this? Five five mm, minutes. Maybe? At least five minutes, maybe longer. Like you don't want them to get properly soft. You don't want them to be still quite hard and chewy. Yeah, I think you're mainly going for some caramelisation on both mm -hmm. the carrots and the onions, and that mm. caramelisation again will add loads of richness to the finished stew. Mm. And to speed it up a little here, we put on the lid for a little while. Yeah, I was also a bit concerned with it losing all those delicious juices as well. Mm. Okay, and some more stirring. And then we go, add our leeks. Yeah. More stirring. It's more always stirring. stirring that always stirring. When editing the footage for this video, I realised that I love stirring. I'm yeah. just constantly stirring. That you're not seeing as much stirring as there was going on. Look me, me stirring again. There we go. There I go. Stirring the garlic. He stopped stirring for a moment. He's yeah. leaving it alone. Okay, good. Leave it alone for a little while longer. More stirring. More stirring. Good. Right. And oh. here's the thing that makes it um, a a Flemish stew. We've got a bottle of Lafe, which is a Flemish beer. Um, We're we, struggling to open it. We did have some delirium tremors, but we drank it all. <laughs> so we had to buy the only Flemish beer you can get in Britain, which is Lafe. Mm -hmm. And then add our thyme and bay leaves. Give it a stir. A stir, really. Mm -hmm. this, this is very odd, I wouldn't expect. And this is some stock that we'd made earlier in the day, some beef stock. How do we make that, Jess? Um, you, well, we got some trimmings and bone marrow. Um, the trimmings free from the butcher, bone marrow you can just get from the shops. You roast that off for a while with onions and carrots, about 40 minutes in a hot oven, 200 degrees. Um, then put in a pot with lots of water and boil down for a couple of hours. Yeah, that's it, wasn't it? And then you end up with this layer of fat that you can skim off. Mm -hmm. Right, so I think you saw us earlier just tasting, and we realised that it needed some more stuff. And we've, um, after a bit of Googling, we found out that the carbonade normally has brown sugar, vinegar, and oops, mustard. and mustard, which we're about to have now. Yes, this is a couple of tablespoons of whole grain must, which... Has some heat, but also a bit more sweetness as well, so don't add too much brown sugar. 
Yeah, it's um, it's a sweetish stew, isn't it? Oh, it's yeah. still rich, but it's it's got some sweetness to it. Yeah, because even the beer is, has ever so slight sweetness to it. Cause it's brown beer, not a blonde beer. Yeah, the brown beer has some sweetness to it. A blonde is a little more sort of hoppy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and then I had it in the tomato puree. Give that a little stir. Mm-hmm. And more stirring from Jess. And then that, and then just leave it for a while. And then leave it. And while you leave it, you should probably make yourself a sidecar or here. An orange sidecar. There is a great train pun going on there, um, just to flag that up. Um, so this is basically like a normal sidecar, but with some added orange juice. Um, so you squeeze your oranges, of course. Uh, then you add your lemon, so it's just going to be a bit too sweet and a bit too orangey. What do you think of this? I yeah, I, I agree. I think um, it ended. Up, it's basically a sort of less tart mm-hmm. sidecar, mm-hmm. isn't it? If tartness isn't your thing, mm-hmm. yeah, it is good. Um, so, as you can see there, ice in the glasses to chill those, ice in the cocktail shaker as well. Two shots of brandy each. Yeah, because you're making two drinks. Yes. And why uh, why all the oranges, Jess? What, what, what? I accidentally bought far too many oranges, and that's pretty much why this is an orange sidecar. But it does also taste good, there is a reasoning there. Um, and then some Quanta as well to add to the oranginess so this is an orange liqueur you could use triple sec instead if you wanted to and here's your juice and mm-hmm. so it's so the ratios are two shots brandy one shot quant- shot quantro one shot juice per drink shake it up for a while about 30 seconds i'd say yeah until um, the until the side of the shaker gets all there we go you can see all the condensation on the yes. side I need to double strain it because there's lemon, so you use a metal strainer and then also a little sieve as well. And enjoy. And enjoy. Approving knots. Yes. Mm-hmm. Give me. Yeah. Whoa. Can I have some? You can. Ah. Oh, you look so stressful, please. 